three, two, one. What's up, everybody? And uh, I'm Dave. This is a new podcast called Full Dose of Dave. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy my content. If you do, go ahead and hit the like button uh, when you're done with this video. If it's your first time visiting, hit the subscribe button. Also, uh, like I said, if you like it, hit the uh, share button. All that good stuff. Make sure your uh, notifications are set to all. So that way you don't miss any content in the future. So, without further ado, we're going to get on our first topic. And uh, oddly enough, uh, starting this podcast uh, in 2020, uh, we are uh, Sunday, March 15th, 10.56 p.m. Uh, The coronavirus is sweeping over the nation, sweeping over the world. And everyone's scrambling to try and figure out what to do, what to buy, where to run to, where to hide. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, really. I mean, um, a virus like this, there's there's really nothing you can do. I think uh, the experts are saying that pretty much everyone's going to get it eventually. It's just a matter of time. So you can wash your hands for 20 seconds. You can... Um, stay inside your home Uh, but the reality is um, unless you're Bill Gates you are pretty much fucked Um, and here's why I say this about a month ago I was uh, watching YouTube videos and I was looking up bunkers and I found this company uh, that builds bunkers for all kinds of different scenarios and uh, the one common denominator that is available in all the bunkers uh, is an air filtration system. And all these bunkers are airtight. Um, so these filters will filter out, I believe they said, like pretty much every single known chemical and virus uh, in the world. And wouldn't you know it, Bill Gates has this company build him one of their shelters at every single one of his homes. And wouldn't you know that recently Bill Gates stepped down from from Microsoft. Bill Gates stepped down from Microsoft. He said he's going to be working on other things. Well, I think that was a code word for he's going underground into his bunker where they have the air filtration system. Uh, because I th- believe he knows about this virus. He knows the depth of this virus. He knows that it's going to infect everyone and what it's going to do in the end. Now, do any of us know? No, we speculate, but we don't really know. For all we know, it could be the zombie virus. Um, you know, I always say that movies and TV shows give us a glimpse into the future. You want an example? Go back to Star Trek. Uh, for you Trekkies, I probably pronounced that incorrect, so I will uh, correct myself, and that is Star Trek. But go back to Star Trek uh, and some of the original series, TV shows. Uh, they actually had cell phones before cell phones were even created or thought of here. Uh, so there's food for thought. Uh, and then you have shows like The Walking Dead, that in the very first season, when Rick makes it to the CDC... And oddly enough, uh, the CDC was a real entity they used in that show. Um, He meets a scientist there. And at the end, that scientist whispered into his ear that everyone is infected. There's nothing anyone can do about it. And once you die, that's when they would be reincarnated into a zombie. Unless there was uh, a disconnect between the brain and the body. So that's why you see everyone getting a a head kill on the zombies in that show uh, to eliminate them. So really crazy times we live in, but uh, the kind of panic that I'm seeing in the town I'm staying in, Effingham, Illinois, um, just really kind of uncalled for. People are going out and stocking up on things they don't really need to. Um, The main thing is just making sure that uh, everyone wash their hands. uh, We're not all touchy-feely with each other and you know, everyone gives each other their personal space, not coughing on one another. Um, we're not gathering in large groups of people and huddling up uh, because this virus is airborne. 
So the less contact we have with each other, the better. Uh, for example, I mean, um, you know, we're walking into Walmart the other night. Um, and just to kind of see if the reports were true, because I hadn't really been since I heard about all this toilet paper missing and <laughs> uh, the bread aisle wiped out and uh, all the water taken. And I mean, just the list goes on of things not there. But yeah, so we get in there and uh, walk through the store, notice all the stuff missing. Uh, and, and one thing that I got to talk about that really baffles me, though, you know, is the fact that once I get to the sporting good aisle, this is where I was really curious to see. I get to the sporting good aisle and I get in the fishing section and where all the lures and baits and all that stuff would be, they are fully stocked. And there's that old saying, give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day. Teach him how to fish, you'll feed him for a lifetime. And I'm just thinking, why did nobody come in here and stock up on lures and uh, fishing poles? And, uh, you know, like if you've got guns, rifles for hunting, uh, there was plenty of ammo. We've heard reports of certain states and cities and counties uh, being completely out of ammo because people are freaking out so badly that they're going out and buying a ball of ammo. People are buying more guns. So um, people are in a real panic out there. And I don't understand it, you know. Um, I'm kind of going by my daily business, not panicking, and we're surviving just fine. Uh, granted, we're homeless living in a hotel, but, um, hey, you know, life goes on, right? Um, I'm not to say that we haven't been affected by this virus, uh, whether it's fake or real. Uh, it is affecting us because uh, the company that I was working for uh, before it laid me off, they receive all their products from China. And so they were well behind on their containers, uh, shipping containers full of products that just weren't getting to our company. So we were running out of products on our shelves as well. And this is well before all the Walmart stuff started happening, about a week or two before. And so I kind of already saw it coming. And, uh, you know, we talked about it in the warehouse a little bit, but nobody seemed to be too concerned. And, uh, yeah, now I'm laid off and uh, started working for another factory. Uh, getting laid off it's just um it's gonna affect a lot of things um and what this is gonna have to show americans is that we're gonna have to bring uh production back to the u.s we can't rely on china for everything if we do we're gonna starve we're not gonna be able to wipe our butts um <laughs> really what, what are we gonna be able to do without china i mean china has really uh in a sense of things bought out america and Americans for that for that matter, because you guys have gotten used to these low prices, you know, and, and really uh, they're not as low as these, you know, distributors are buying them for. And you realize companies are buying products from China, not even building these products. They're just buying. They never have hands on. They're already packaged up and ready to sell once they get here. Buying them for pennies on the dollar and turning around and selling them for 2000 percent markup. That's ridiculous, and I don't think you people really understand that, but I'm watching it because, uh, you know, for example, uh, I know what these products are being sold at at my factory, and then I go to places like Alibaba.com, and I look, out, I look at how much manufacturers charge for these products, and literally, like, some of these products that we sell for thousands of dollars, they're buying for anywhere between $50 to maybe a couple hundred dollars, and then turn around and marking them up for thousands of dollars. It's insane. You know, if these companies are getting that great of a deal on it, why aren't they giving us a deal? Because they do not care about Americans. All they care about is the bottom dollar. They are capitalists to the fullest. They are trying to make money on you. So wake up, America, because uh, this is our wake up call. If there ever was, you know, you guys um, can blame this. You can blame that. But really, we have ourselves to blame. We want things now and we want them as cheap as possible. <clears throat> so, wake up. If we don't bring uh, factory work back to, uh, or actually manufacturing back to America, we are going to lose out. And Americans are going to suffer more than they are now. More than just losing your job, you're not going to be able to feed your family. You're not going to be able to clothe your family because all that stuff comes from China. Start doing business with USA companies. You know, and, and I'm one to, I, I should be one to blame, uh, not, not completely, but, 
you know, I was considering, I've got a few other companies that I've got ideas for that I was considering using, you know, websites like Alibaba to find my manufacturing companies because, yes, they do uh, build products for super cheap and uh, they ship it uh, straight to Amazon warehouses for you, you know, so they make things a little convenient also. Uh, but once they decide that they don't want to ship to you anymore, sell to you anymore, uh, maybe our American government pissed off their government, so now they don't want to play ball anymore. You know, I mean, we're just screwed. So I, I'm I'm actually now going to have to consider using a, a USA-made company. I'm going to have to just go find a, a producer out here that will produce my products. And uh, it's going to come at a premium price. Um, so if you want them, you, that's what you're going to have to pay. You know, I wanted to get these products from China because I was going to be able to give you guys the best deal. But now I won't be able to do that. You know, which is whatever, you know, I pay, I'm going to have to mark maybe 100, 200% markup just to pay for shipping or whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, things are definitely going to be changing here. Um not only in the next couple of weeks, but in the next months and the years to come. Uh, it's not going to be fixed by this next presidency, no matter who gets in office. This has done some real damage to our economy, whether you see it or not. But back to uh, this virus and, uh, you know, people like Bill Gates. Uh, if you haven't made your billion dollars by now, or at least a a few million to be able to buy one of these special bunkers. Um, if you don't already have your bunker in place, it's too late. Okay. I mean, I could become a millionaire tomorrow and production on my new home with a new bunker is going to take months. By that time, I would have already been infected, I'm sure. So um, just deal with it. Quit going out there and hoarding everything. You don't need to. Just live your daily lives like you used to. Buy one pack of toilet paper at a time, you know, maybe one, two flats of water at a time. Um, and really, I mean, <sighs> y'all are making it is tougher on on uh, your neighbor, um, their kids, the elderly. You're making it tough on everyone by going out there and buying up all this stuff. And you may not care about that. Maybe all you care about is yourself. But maybe that's what's got us in trouble to begin with. As nobody cares about their common man. You know? Um, my family probably wouldn't be homeless, homeless right now if it wasn't for uh, selfishness out there. You know? Uh, we could blame it on me. We could blame it on my wife. We could blame it on whatever we want. But, you know, how are we going to get back civilization the way it should be um, if we don't start helping each other? You know, I'm producing these videos on multiple platforms to help people. And so I'm out there promoting them, you know, just like anybody else would on Facebook, Instagram. And I have friends of 20 years calling me up, hating on me, dude. Like, why are you doing this? Why should anybody follow you? Da, 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 da. I'm like, because I want to help people. This, you're coming down on me because I want to help people. That's insanity. You want to question my morals? Question your own morals. I know what my morals are. I know uh, where I'm at. I know where my heart's at. You know, um, I try to have conversations with people that already have these large communities to try and, you know, uh, educate them and their their following. But they don't want to hear it. You know, they call everyone else selfish and they call everyone else greedy. But really, they're holding their community hostage to themselves. They don't want their community to rise above because then what do they need them for? Are they going to still watch their videos? They're not going to make their money from their AdSense revenue. I mean, it's just, eh, it's a snowball effect. Now, I'm trying to promote a real community that helps each other out. You subscribe to me, I subscribe to you. We watch each other's videos and guess what? You get enough people doing that and you can support each other on YouTube. This platform is amazing like that. Now, that's what YouTube wants after all. You feed the algorithms that way. Your videos will get in front of more people that way. Not just your base group of people that share and subscribe, but now you'll reach the people that really matter too. 
the people that are going to watch your videos day in, day out, that will make you the ads and installers you need to be able to help other people. You know, you'll be able to help yourself too. But that's 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 really what I'm trying to do for these homeless people is, is get them on the right program. Uh, rather than, you know, hoping and dreaming and wishing and all these things for something to change, you know, waiting for handouts, whatever it is, you know, uh, you can actually be proactive and do something yourself. Like I said, I'm homeless now, but I'm choosing to be proactive. I'm making these videos, this content on, on multiple platforms. And something's bound to take off. And if you did the same thing, oh my gosh, we would all take off really fast together. So I'm hoping this video reaches the right people. I'm praying that you all take action like I am doing. Um, I'm, I'm, I've definitely learned over the years that you have to be uh, the change you seek. That's what I'm doing. I'm being the change I seek. I'm trying to be a leader, not a follower. So you should do the same thing. Lead yourself. Don't just be a part of this community and watch and follow. Be a leader of your own destiny. Because if you don't control your destiny, someone else will. Well, I don't really know what else to cover about that virus uh, business, but, you know, guys, just go on your daily business. That's all I can recommend. Because it's uh, inevitable that everyone's going to get infected, like I said, unless you have a bunker with one of those special filters. If I can find uh, that company again, I'll link it below. Uh, maybe it'll help you in the future for future viruses. Who knows? This, this may be the one that ends it all. But don't act like it because if you do, you might put yourself in a really bad position. And if it's not, then what are you going to be doing after the dust settles? And don't set yourself up for failure. Don't sit there and wait for two weeks, quit your job and hide, waiting for everything to end. Because it may not end, probably won't end. It's inevitable not to end. If you're a believer, you need to get back into Revelations and read the signs of the times. If you're not a believer, I recommend you becoming a believer, picking up a Bible. And, um, you know, I always recommend to start off in uh, the New Testament, the gospel. Uh, but these days and age, you kind of kind of fast track. You can go back to that stuff. Um, go to Revelations and start reading Revelations. I can read Revelations in about an hour or so, so it doesn't take that long. Read that book a couple times. I've read it, geez, man, a couple dozen times by now, I'm sure. That's probably one of the most read books in that book for me is Revelations. But it's because I want to know the signs of the times so I know what to prepare for. Are we looking at the second coming of Christ? Are we there yet? We may be close, so get prepared. Anyways, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this content. I hope it uh, resonates with you guys. I hope you get something out of it. I hope you learn something from it. Uh, go check out some of my other channels. Um, I have my channel, uh, David Anthony, and how you can find that channel, because there are a lot of David Anthonys, is just searching YouTube uh, for David Anthony how to change the world and you'll find me. Uh, it's, I'm the only one that has uh, those keywords linked together. All right. Uh, if you want to find some of my other cooler fun channels, that's going to be happening in the future. I have one called Frontier Life. And that one's going to be fun building up our truck uh, to survive us on the road and off-road. There'll be many channels to come too. So stay tuned. I appreciate you guys tuning in for the first podcast. Uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Make sure you turn all your notifications on to all. Uh, and share. Share, share, share. Let's do this together. Take care, guys. Peace and love. God bless.